Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I hope you guys are doing well today. Today, we're going to be talking about ISA 27001 as part of our continuing web series hosted by ISHA IT. ISA 27001 is becoming one of the fastest growing compliance standards adopted by companies around the world to highlight their commitment to security, privacy, and data management best practices. Today, we have two qualified speakers, Aditya and Kiran. Aditya, the Chief Cybersecurity Office, Officer here at ISHA IT, has worked at every level from tester to director over the course of his 13 year career in cybersecurity. He brings a wealth of experience in security and compliance after working with Fortune 500 companies, Global 1000 companies, leading startups, and is uniquely positioned to give you insight from both the technical and management perspectives. Kiran is the VP of Security Compliance here at ISHA IT, and having previously held roles of Global Delivery Head and Program Manager. Our resident compliance with Kieran is a specialist in ISO 20000, ISO 27001, 22301, SOC 1, 2, and 3, high trust, PCI, most common compliance frameworks you can imagine. And he will be giving you a lot of the nuts and bolts of ISO 27001 and can help juxtapose its importance and compare and contrast it with other security frameworks you may be considering. Together, they're going to be guiding us through ISO 27001, the benefits of adopting it as a compliance standard, preparing for ISO 27001 certification and the process, what it looks for and what is covered in an ISO 27001 audit, the nuts and bolts of it all, and the cost advantage and the financial return on investment from getting a 27001 certification. Um, before I hand this off to Aditya and Kiran, we at Isha IT find the best way to learn is by asking lots of questions and engaging with our speakers. So please feel free to send questions in the Q&A panel and we'll address them at the end of the webinar. Um, without further ado, Aditya, if you wanna take it over. Thank you, Shalin. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all of you. Firstly, thank you for attending today's webinar. Uh, on today's webinar, Kira and I intend to give you a brief introduction about ISO 27001 and how can you combat this beast uh, compliance. So a little bit about myself, Shalin uh, gave a very brief introduction, but spent a lot of time in security, uh, done everything from pen testing to security compliance. Uh, I'm also an ISO 27001 lead implementer. And my experience of implementing ISO 27001 at various customers is, uh, is and, and Kiran and my work is the, is the result, is this entire presentation. So I'll let Kiran introduce himself now. Hey everyone, uh, as Aditya mentioned, so I'm taking care of the security compliance and I'm certified on ISO 27001. I'm a lead auditor. I'm also a CISO, uh, certified information security auditor and CDPSC, Certified Data Privacy Security Engineer, High Trust. And um, coming to ISO 27001, I have implemented more than uh, 50 implementation I have done across the world. So looking forward. So yeah, thank you. Great. So I'm gonna jump straight into the meat. Now, why is it that ISO 27001 is so popular as a security standard, right? To first start out with, I'd like to first give you a brief introduction into what is a security framework. Now, just like everything in this world, a goal without a plan is just a wish, right? So a framework is a defined roadmap of how you can combat or reach a particular goal. So a security framework does the same thing. It is the most sustainable, successful, streamlined security you know, rollout program out there. Now, there are a multitude of security frameworks that are present in the market today. You have the likes of COVID, the ISO 27,000 uh, series, the NIST uh, CSF, which is popular for you know, secure and critical uh, infrastructure. You have the high trust CSF, which is for health data security. So they all have their specializations, but if I were to pick um, you know, a generalist framework, which cuts across all industries and all segments of organizations, I'd go with the ISO 27000, right? So what you get in the end is a way for your security program. I mean, I would, you know, 
with when you when you start out to build out this particular security program it's a way for you to identify your various types of risks and vulnerabilities and provide you with strategies on how you can combat and fix these risks next is identify your vulnerabilities and lastly understand your overall security posture and build out a roadmap so that you can go ahead and implement controls that are required for you to you know get a better security posture so that's the whole uh job of a security framework. Today we're speaking about the ISO 27001. I'm going to get straight to it. Um, a little brief of an introduction regarding ISO 27001. It is nothing but a international standard uh, with the best practices for implementing an ISMS. Now ISMS stands for Information Security Management System. It is nothing but a framework of policies and procedures that includes legal, physical, and technical controls that are required for an organization to maintain and sustain security. Now, this was first start, you know, this, this entire journey of ISO 27001 was start, first started in 1992 with the Code of Practice for Security Management. Over the years, it became the BS 7799, as most of you know, and then it kind of pivoted to the two, in 2005, it became an ISO standard you know, became more standardized, started being adopted by folks. And 2013, there was an update that came. Now, oftentimes when you're going through the whole 27,000 series, you'll see a lot of different numbers, 27002, you'll see 27005, 8, et cetera, 18. They all have their own own advantages and disadvantages. The two, uh, 27002 is nothing but your code of conduct and how is it that you implement ISMS. But the certification standard is 27001, right? So 27001 is the audit, auditable and certifiable standard. And who conducts this audit would be a certification uh, registrar uh, and you'll find them across the world, right? Um, now, coming to the benefits of adherence to ISO 27001. So like I mentioned, you get a framework, right? This framework, what it does is it helps in streamlining security and helps you achieve your goal in a, in a more methodical method, right? So it's a structured program. I'd like to call it an instruction manual on hacking your way to successfully becoming more secure. So what you get out of it is two things. You basically get security across the organization, so ensuring your CI, your confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data. Next is it also aids with increasing your brand reputation because security is across the organization. It helps build trust with your clients and partners. And how does that happen? Because with ISO 27001, if you meet the requirements, you also, it's a certifiable standard. So you get a certification that's valid for three years. So this also helps you fulfill a lot of your compliance norms due to the country or the nature of your business. Now, the indirect be benefits of it would be that you drastically reduce your chances of a security breach or an incident. We all know the nightmare that a security breach or incident could be. So you save both on direct and indirect costs. And, um, uh, and lastly, uh, you, know, you, you have a systematic way in how you can identify all of your risk, your critical assets, your crown jewels, your vulnerabilities and threats. And lastly, you know, humans being the weakest link in security, ISO 27001 really helps forward security in your employees. So uh, let me give a glimpse about ISO 27001. So ISO 27001, uh, generally we call it as ISMS, Information Security Management System. So the beauty of ISO 27001, it covers people, process and technology. And also the most important point here is that it also includes the supplier and vendor are secure. So that's the beauty of ISO 27001, which helps the organization to manage, monitor, and improve their information security in one place. So when you look at ISO 27001, it comes with 14 domains that consist of 35 control categories and 114 controls. The main crucial point here is that uh, ISO 27001 keeps 114 controls. So it's not mandated that I have to implement all the 114 controls. So whenever I go to the different places, most of them, they ask me that, should I have to implement all 114 controls? No, it's basically, it's not mandated that you shall implement each and every one of them. However, 
what you need to do is that you need to look at your security control based on the risk assessment. So that next step you have to come out with is a statement of applicability. Simply say that which control is applicable to your organizations. So which one you need to implement. So it's very important. Um, the, one of the major requirements from the external auditor is that how many controls you have adopted in your organization. Is it applicable to you? Yes, you need to give the justification. If not, you have to give the justification as well. So how do you get certified? So for example, what are the steps? So here are the six steps, the important steps, what you need to look at is that the most important is that you need to have the management support. And secondly, you need to identify the scope and allocate um, the competent resource. It's not about allocating a resource who are competent about uh, information security management system. That's the most important thing. So next is you need to identify your scope, understand your internal and external issues and who are your stakeholders that you need to identify. Step two, you need to conduct your risk assessment, understand the organization, which are the risk which is applicable to your organization, you need to take it up. Step three is the most important where you need to do the documentation standpoint. Uh, many of the organization, let me take an example of an HR. So in every organization, there is a, you know, the screening process. Prior to employment, you will have your own screening process. However, as I told you earlier that uh, ISMS covers people, process, and technology. On the people standpoint, ISMS also requires that you do the screening as well. And at the same point of time, you need to make sure during the employment, they are aware about what are the agreements team, you need to get it signed from them. So step four, so external auditor will be doing the stage one audit and the stage one audit predominantly is for the documentation review, what we call it as. All right, so where they will be checking that each and every document is being implemented, what is the status on that. So they will quickly review the documentation. The next step is that if any uh, non-conformity comes in the stage one, they will keep certain period of time to fix it up as well. So next is you need to have a complete outstanding activity such as you need to test the control to whether the control is being effective or not and what are the potential improvement you need to do it so that's the step five and the step six is we the stage two audit which is the most important audit the auditor will conduct a thorough on-site audit so currently due to the COVID situation so they are conducting the off-site audit as well and the auditor will be looking for an evidence the organization is following the, the complete documentation as well. So when I look at the SMBs, uh, this is basically the small and medium uh, business. So generally it takes about four to nine months to complete the, all the steps and enterprise level, it will take around 12 to 15 months. So these are the most important 15 steps needs to be looked at based on the determined scope. All right, so I'm gonna give you a little gl glimpse about our 15 step secret sauce as I call it, right? How is it that you as an organization can have success and ensure that you get certified? So just like a framework is a structured program, so uh, is our implementation. So I think first I'd like to you know, emphasize on the fact that you have to understand your organization. You have to understand what is, what is your scope? What are your critical assets? What is it that you need to safeguard, right? It's like, you know, if I, if I take an instance of, of baseball, it's easier to, to protect the diamond as compared to the entire Yankee stadium, right? So it's very important to clamp down in a scope and only include facets of your business that are most critical to your certification. Next is develop a ISMS policy, your information security policy, which is nothing but a high level guideline as to what you should be doing as part of your information security roadmap or your goals. Uh, once you've identified your most critical assets, classify them and classify them based on criticality. So it's important to understand which assets are more important, most important. A CEO's laptop is more, more, has more critical information as compared to the front desk laptop. So it's very important that different controls are maintained so that are applied so that both of them are secured and, and, uh, and no two you know, assets have similar you know, controls because they're very, very different in, you know, in, in case there's a breach, you know, they, they have a very, very different risks. Next is to conduct a risk assessment. 
The risk assessment is nothing but understanding your inherent risk and your uh, risk that you've taken on due to the fact of doing business. It could be due to third parties, due to your location, your service providers, et cetera. And it's very important for you to identify what all your risks and then call out, you know, what kind of vulnerabilities and threats that you, do you pose and then call out what kind of controls you, do you have in place to mitigate those risks. Now, once you've identified these risks, you will of course have risks that are still prevalent. So it's very, very important to move ahead with a risk treatment plan so that you can go ahead and mitigate these risks or negate them or accept the, these risks. After which we go ahead and, you know, we'd go ahead and define a security organization structure. It's very important to un for, the, for the organization and the security resources to understand who's responsible, who's accountable for certain security activities, right? Then we move on to the most critical element of ISMS, as I'd call it, is drafting up your policies and procedures. These are nothing but your standard operating procedures of how your organization and its various elements need to be and follow a particular you know, structure in order to meet information security. So they, this basically breaks down, you know, what should, for example, what should be a patch management procedure look like? What's the periodicity of patching? You know, whose approval do you need, et cetera. In case there's an emergency patch, who takes an approval and, you know, and the likes of that. Next, uh, it's all about implementation support. So organizations like ourselves work with various organizations in order for, you know, to help them bridge some of the gaps. So in, in you know, for example, the organizations unable to understand whether they need to roll out a GRC platform or they're unable to understand understand which security awareness tool should they go with. So based on the complexity of your organization and the size that you are, those tools and technologies vary. So that's where you really value from a partner who's done this many, many times. Next, you move on to the effectiveness measurement of how these controls are actually doing in the wild, right? Uh, lastly, then you move on to your trainings, your awareness, ensuring that, you know, all your staff is trained, you have phishing exercises done to check its effectiveness. Subsequently, you move into the finalization of ISO documentation. That's something I'm going to talk in a bit. And then as, as, as it's very, very important for organizations to ensure that they actually are ready for the audit, it's, I, I would highly recommend that you go ahead and conduct an internal audit in the form of a pre-audit, which kind of tells you whether you're audit ready or not. And that's when you call upon the auditor who comes in and does the certification audit. And then you move into the last stage, which is all about maintenance of security, right? And this is an annual thing. So certification is valid for three years, but ISO as a standard requires you to do some maintenance activities every year because there could be new risks, there could be changes in your scope, or also to showcase that you're sustaining ISO certification. Now, I'd like to quickly talk about some key steps to success. Um, as I'd like to you know, point out is these steps are very, very essential for an organization to undertake in order to meet the requirements of ISO 27001. Now, this is one of those slides that I would definitely recommend screenshotting. And so, you know, you start out by purchasing a copy of the standard, you appoint a ISO 27001 champion, you, you know, you, you secure management support, you establish context, your scope, your internal context, your, your scope for ISMS, you draft all of your policy procedures, then quickly move into establishment of a framework conduct a risk assessment, implement, choose and implement the controls that you need to have in place for mitigating risks, conduct trainings and, and so on and so forth. I'd like to move to point number 12, which is all about conducting an internal audit, which is, an, which is a mandatory line item. You have a management review and then you go in for certification and registration by a third party, which is stage one, like Kiran mentioned, is a documentation review and stage two is the audit. And lastly, it's all about maintenance and improving your ISMS. So these are some steps that, you know, organizations need to look at, just like, you know, the steps that we had showcased that, you know, you need to use or, or leverage in order to meet ISO 27001 requirements. All right, and coming to uh, my favorite thing, based on our experience, we've kind of seen certain pitfalls that organizations uh, fall prey to when they're implementing ISO 27001. I think the most important is, like I mentioned, incorrect scope. So it's easier to protect a diamond as compared to the entire Yankee Stadium. So either it's too big or it's too little. Organizations feel that I only have these three systems that have critical information. Maybe I only have to certify them 
but you also have to understand that there are people who are working you know on these particular systems so you have the whole humans associated to it human security you have third parties you have vendors all of those risks have to be factored then a lack of process and gaps in your policy procedures a lack of clarity in roles and responsibility like i mentioned it's very very important to set up that security organization so that everybody knows what their role is so nothing is left for you know for guess next is lack of management support this is a big one because an iso 27001 is a long journey and this would require significant amount of investment in time and budget from your end so it's very very important to secure management support without which you know this effort may not be possible next is a huge gap in process and implementation i think this is the most common one most often clients call out that you know they have these great processes and they have really nice procedure documents but when it comes down to implementation it's it's mostly incorrect so it's very very important that organizations test the fact that their process and implementation is in line then you have inadequate evidence for the iso, ISO audit incorrect remediation of gaps you think you've fixed it but you have and so that's why a pre audit is most important having some kind of management and measurement of control so checking whether they actually effectiveness effective or not and uh, lastly failure to showcase continuous improvement in your iso 27001 journey right the most uh, the important or we can say the heart of isms implementation is the the risk assessment so uh, i have seen many of the organizations so uh, you know the failure because especially in identification of the threats so how do we address this one the first and foremost uh, before you conduct a risk assessment we need to understand the organization and its context so basically it's like what is my business into where is my location what is my business uh, verticals perspective so we need to look into it so risk assessment is a process that helps uh, organization to identify the the potential problem that could undermine the initiatives you need to implement a lot of controls on that as well so the first as i told you the first is to understanding the organization and its context so you also need to know the needs and expectation of the interested parties so when i say the interested parties basically your stakeholders your requirements perspective so what is they are looking to it the next one is you need to conduct a swot analysis basically you need to make sure what is my organization strength weakness opportunity and threat perspective when i say threat the most important thing is that from the organization standpoint from the business standpoint you need to draw the threats uh, when i went for an audit so i have seen people you know writing um, you know um, sans from as a threat but sans from it's applicable only in the middle east but it's not applicable in let's say any island of california it's not applicable so that is where it's very important that you need to identify the threats and you also look at the weakness in your organization as well at the same point of time you also need to look at uh, the probability of occurrence of these threats as well so based on that you need to decide whether you need to treat whether you need to accept or you need to transfer the risk when you identify the risk how are you going to treat those one that's the major thing risk assessment it's it's a technique which helps to definite uh, preventive measures to reduce the attack and it also helps you to make sure that regularly review the control effectiveness as well so basically you can look at the continual improvement so from last year to this year so i have mitigated these threats occurring into my organization so that's the benefit of the conducting the risk assessment yeah uh, yeah thanks sir yeah. so the next is once you identify the risk the another most important is that how do you implement those controls that's the most important you need to decide on the control as well which control is applicable to my organization so out of 114 you can pick up one control and say that this control will be helpful for me so let me take an example of a user awareness program for that matter so here you need to measure the effectiveness of the control as well so you can put the kpis so basically to measure the effectiveness and the efficiency standpoint as well effectiveness basically you can come up with the kpi mentioning that percentage of people attended uh, in a user awareness training so that's one of the kpi for you and the second one is on the incident standpoint so you also can look at the kpi that percentage of security 
incident uh, reported by the end users. So how many incidents how many uh, the incident or how many it's been coming out what are the control is it working for me or not so basically to measure the control effectiveness as well if you need to regularly update to the resolve the risk and this is the best way to measure the implementation of the controls as well So the next is on the certification perspective. So internal audit and the external audit. So basically the first, once you complete the implementation, so the once when you complete the documentations, once you have completed the, uh, the implementation of it, generally it will be conducted as an internal audit. So this would be done, we will nominate or the organization will nominate a person who's qualified to conduct uh, the ISMS audit. That's the point one. The stage one audit, basically the documentation review. So where the external auditor will be conducting this one to check the documentation is in place or not. ISO 27001 also mentions some mandate documentation as well, where organization must document these processes. So that's the most important in the documentation review. The next one, the final audit, which is basically the field review, what we call it as. So where they will be checking that the documentations what i have implemented is it is it in place or not that is what they will be evaluating but please note if there is any major finding the certification will be failed that's the most important thing uh, especially in the stage two if there is a major breakdown so that is where they call it as a major finding so minor uh, for the minor finding so you need to provide a corrective action plan so that how you going to mitigate this uh, risk and the duration of uh, you know mitigation these control also need to be mentioned however the certification will be passed but uh, you know with a non conformity when they come for the next year surveillance audit they want this finding to be fixed so please note whatever the minor findings whatever the findings they give those findings needs to be fixed in the next year So next is uh, implement one certify many. So basically uh, this is one of the uh, uh, many organizations, the biggest challenge is that um, they have a different certifications. For example, they have ISO 27001, they have the GDPR, they have the SOC 2. So there are multiple uh, you know, standard where they have to comply with. And uh, you know, instead of creating a separate each and every certification, it's always better to do an integrated management system. So what is the benefit of uh, doing the integrated management system? So you can club the documentation perspective. It gives a competitive advantage and legal and regulatory perspective. You can address those requirements. And uh, especially the, when, you, uh, when the external auditor comes for uh, the ISO 27001 or ISO 2701A, they can conduct one-time audit where they can review the both the standards as well. This will save the time and uh, the most important is the duplication of effort will be reduced as well. So that's the benefit. And uh, organization, yeah. All right, so uh, this is the IMS, so which is basically what are the standards you can integrate with. So ISO 27001 and you can integrate with ISO 27018. Please note for ISO 27018 and 27701, ISO 27001 is mandate. So ISO 22301, which is uh, business continuity management, so, and uh, ISO 20,000. So these uh, ISO 27001 series and uh, 22301. So this can be uh, you know, merged together because their annexure is very common common so that gives an advantage for the systematic approach where to avoid a duplication as well and you can come up with the silo wise risk assessment and you can avoid the duplication of the process and uh, that's the benefit over here and also the cost saving by optimization of time and the resource as well so especially in today's competitive business environment streamlining the operation is really essential to keep the overhead, uh, overhead cost low and implementing the integrated management system provides a framework 
for doing the, the complete duplication and improve the efficiency as well. And uh, especially for the stakeholder perspective, so it also gives the satisfaction that uh, have a systematic approach uh, to the integrated risk management and they have a standard governance as well in place. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the cost advantage of an integrated management system. So, like uh, Kiran mentioned, this is a very very popular way that organizations are steering towards. Some people call it common control framework. We call it the integrated management system. It's all about figuring out a base base framework and then mapping out different requirements or different standards to it, and then achieving compliance across all of them. Of course, the certification would be separate but at least you have one common framework that you're trying to you know, hit. So from a, from a cost reduction and a effort reduction standpoint, we have seen there's almost a 62% reduction in efforts when you go the integrated way, right? As compared to, you know, once you've finished ISO 27001, then you pick up SOC 2, or you finish SOC 2, then you pick up GDPR. Why not figure out all the things that you are, need to comply with and mash it up together to create this integrated management system. Lastly, secondly, from a productivity standpoint, there's, there's so much lesser of a time that is spent by the management and the security teams in for audits and reviews. Frankly speaking, the amount of time that most security leaders, CISOs and security teams spend on meeting compliance requirements, it kind of floods up almost the entire year. Uh, Right, which then doesn't allow them adequate time for upscaling or doing real, real security work, which is to, you know, defending yourself against attackers and 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 keeping a tab on on new emerging threats associated with your organization. So this could be a very very good streamlined way that an organization could comply with various different standards. So from a sustained standpoint, it's a lot easier. From an implementation standpoint, like the chart mentions, it's 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 much more simpler. And from a design impl implementation standpoint, it's, uh, it's, it's like tackling one and a half compliance standards as compared to trying to comply with four different standards. So we just wanted to call out that little element that if you're going down the route of certification and ISO 27001, speak to your stakeholders, find out what kind of certifications would come into picture for you right now or in the future. Maybe because you're present in Europe, you have to comply with GDPR sometime. Or if you're, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're taking health data, then you have to comply with HIPAA. Get all of these various standards and you know, create a framework that's integrated that allows you to roll out security once for all. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'd like to quickly talk to you about a case study. So I'd like to talk to you about a case wherein we helped an organization, a health IT service provider, roll out ISO 27001 in record time. So this particular health IT service provider, like most compliances out there, needed to showcase uh, you know, security assurance to their partners and clients on a tight deadline. They, were, they had a particular client that they had signed up, but they had to sh showcase that you know, they're gonna hit certification within five months, right? So they came to us when we, when we started working with the organization, we realized that these, you know, these folks are unaware of where their critical information is. Uh, they have rapidly scaled IT infrastructure, like most well-funded tech startups today. They had little to no security maturity and an absolute absence of framework. It was kind of fly-by-night kind of attitude uh, in the organization when it came to security. They did not have in-house security expertise. That's another big issue in SMBs today. You don't have a CISO or you don't have a director of security who's steering and leading the pack on security. So nobody's really thinking about security. Everybody's thinking about growth hacking and, and building out the product, right? And uh, then the last challenge was, how can they showcase security maturity to customers in a short deadline? Right. So when these guys came, you know, we spent some time, we had some conversations with us. We realized that these were the main challenges. Now they were on a deadline. We were on a deadline to help them get across the finish line. So we started working out with them five months at the time seemed like, you know, a Herculean task for them. And, you know, there were a lot of things to do but with great support from them. We started rolling out the security framework. So we were their trusted advisor. How we took them down this particular path was we first started with the discovery. We identified the types of data they had and where are the locations of health data and other critical data. Next is 
we conducted a high level gap assessment to really find out as a whole for those particular 14 domains what are they missing there's no point drilling down and looking into you know how security monitoring is being done if there's no security monitoring to to begin with or to look at whether audit and logging is being maintained they need to have some basic set of controls uh, you know the bigger controls in place for us to really drill down into the specific requirements so we did a high level gap assessment identified what are the big gaping holes in their security today then we started out rolling out ISO 27001 we defined an ISMS policy you know we started rolling up we wrote up their policy and procedures created a racy uh, racy matrix to kind of tell who's responsible or accountable for certain security tasks and started having them implement them and start taking on these security tasks right it was also a big challenge on who to designate the information security officer and the security execs but in the end due to you know based on you know the 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 relevance of roles we were able to identify that and get that out of the way now identification of the types and locations of critical data really helped them understand their business better also and really clamp down on stuff they realized that they had data everywhere it was on github it was on aws it was on azure i'm like why is it on two different security i mean cloud service providers it was there on everybody's endpoint it was there on central service so this kind of helped them clamp down and really restrict access and bring it all to one place thus reducing their chances of a breach in the future as well we then were able to identify the risks and vulnerabilities which they would possibly be vulnerable to so the risk were identified using a risk assessment we saw some really big risks associated to you know they they were unable to remote wipe uh you know laptops say they were stolen so all that ip could have been could have been stolen also the penetration tests and the vulnerability assessments really helped identify what kind of holes were there in their saas product and what what kind of issues were there in the perimeter security and lastly we were able to we then you know steered towards drafting a roadmap for continual improvement so once they had all of this in place it's all about sustenance and maintenance so you could wrote up a roadmap we wrote up a you know a list of security tasks that they need to do periodically so they can maintain and sustain security the result was we were able to get them to a greater security maturity in in 3 months while being very very cautious and uh, about their their time their budget and resources and all of this was done because we had a structured plan that was drafted by one of our advisors and in the end they got an iso 27001 certification and the ability to showcase a superior security posture to clients and partners all right so last but not the least how does one really find the right partner so if you're going down the isms route there are multiple things that you can do you can either uh, you know go ahead start implementing iso 27001 on your own or isms on your own figure out you know the steps that i had shared the steps that the 15 step secret sauce would definitely help you but i think it's very very popular it's a very very popular way for smbs today to try and hack their way and work with experts on how can they implement iso 27001 faster the end goal is to attain a greater security posture with the least amount of hard burn and get to certification as as soon as possible so if you if you're trying to figure out who's the right implementation partner or auditor to work with from an implementation partner standpoint i would definitely recommend you to first see what is the experience and reputation so the experience of how many organizations have this certified you know what kind of experience do the individual lead implementers or experts have that's also a very very important key element you don't want that an, uh, an organization pawns it off to you know to to junior resources where in your critical your critical assets or this that some thing that is forgotten which leads to you failing a certification next is work with the implementation partner and try and see what kind of projected plan of action are they promising and what what kind of goals and milestones are they talking about and how much of the heavy lifting are they doing right this will give you an understanding of the amount of investment you need to do from a time and budget standpoint if you're if you're on a shoestring budget trying to get there the first at the at the as a in the short, shortest amount of time project, projected plan of action would really give you a clear understanding of how can you get there next is look at what are the outcomes and key results that they're promising right fourth would be to look at case studies and testimonials uh speak to clients who they've worked with in the past look at some of the case studies try and understand you know 
what kind of proven record does this particular implementation partner have? Always do a reference check is something I would definitely recommend. And lastly, move towards the cost proposal discussion and the terms and conditions of what's covered by the implementation partner vis-a-vis -vis what's covered by you, right? So it's very, very important to understand that segregation of duty because oftentimes organizations think that, you know, the implementation partner might be doing much more than uh, what, what they think. So it's very, very important to sit down, and understand what each one needs to do as part of the implementation process. So that brings us to the Q&A. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I've, I've put my email address, I put Kiran's email address. I've also mentioned our LinkedIn handles, but the floor is now open for Q&A. Be more than happy to answer these questions at this point. So one of the questions had to do with, uh, what is the latest version of ISO 27001? Is there a new one that is about to publish? Uh, the current version is ISO 27001-2013 version. So currently the discussion is happening on the latest standard. So uh, it's still not confirmed by ISO. It's, it's yet to finalize. Yeah, that said, there's been so much of change in technology and security. Uh, I think it's high time. So I think we should be expecting one anytime soon. Another one had to do with they were asking what are similar levels uh, of other compliance standards? So things that would also cover similar controls as ISO 27001, but not exactly ISO 27001. Okay, all right. So uh, a framework, some of the frameworks that I called out, NIST CSF, the HITRA CSF, ISO, they're all similar from a framework standpoint. They just look at different elements of, uh, of they, they, they look at different elements of security and concentrate more on it. Like NIST CSF is concentrating more on critical infrastructure and how can you safeguard it. So they're, they're similar in a way, but they're very you know, dissimilar. You can actually pick up any of these frameworks and start working on them in order to roll out security. It doesn't matter whether you go down the ISO route or the, you go down the NIST CSF route or the HITRAS route. HITRAS being only for health, but you can take it for general security practice as well. But as long as you understand them, you really implement them to the T and get a final assessment done by a third party to understand whether you're actually meeting this requirement or not. Uh, if you're doing all of these steps, this of course gives you an understanding of whether you meet that particular requirement or not. So. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I have. All right, great. So uh, I hope this was uh, helpful. Uh, more than happy to answer questions uh, on our LinkedIn or email. That said, this is part of a, like Charlotte mentioned, this is a part of a webinar series. The idea is to debunk myths associated to multiple different standards and help organizations like yourselves uh, implement these and get certified uh, at the earliest time possible. So next month we have a webinar, another webinar on ISO 27001. At this point, we will be bringing in a CISO to talk about real challenges that he faced and how did he combat them and uh, what are the lessons that you can learn from them. I think there's another question that's coming. Sean, do you see it? Okay. No, I do not. All right. Hello. Hey, Adrian. Yeah, Adrian. Hi. Sorry. Uh, I wasn't able to unmute myself. I don't see the control for it. Um, I had a question. Uh, could you go back to the slide on costs with the IMS of, uh, sure. implementing multiple standards versus a single one? Sure. Give me one second. Oops. All right, there you go. Yeah, that's the one. 
partly uh, partly because I wanted to screenshot it. And right. <laughs> secondly, because um, the I just wanted to see one standard at a time, is that with an IMS or in the absence of an IMS? So is, is all of this using an IMS to implement um, one or more standards or is it with or without an I, uh, IMS? So IMS is all about trying to meet two or more standards at a, together, right? So it's an integrated management system. So it could be an I, any variant of ISO 27001, but with the base framework being 27001, you could pick up other certifications like SOC 2, GDPR, et cetera, right? And you can have all of those requirements mashed up together. So it's about creating a common, think of it like a common checklist, right? Yeah. And mapping requirements across all of them. And the delta that is specific to that particular standard is called out separately. So SOC 2 might have its nuances, its differences. GDPR might have its differences and all of them are called out separately. And only those are combated separately. All, all the others are anyways going to be taken care by ISO 27001 because it's kind of the mother of all certifications. And what's on the x-axis there? <laughs> what are those units? Uh, number of hours. Okay. Okay, so in the dark green case, you're talking about a single standard. Um, Oops, okay. Yeah. okay. Cool. Great. All right, awesome. Um, any other questions? All right then, thank you all for your time. Um, this was great. Uh, I hope this was informative and I'd love to hear from all of you. So again, if you'd like to reach out to us, uh, these, these, this is our contact information. Till next month uh, and when we discuss more on ISO 27, thank you so much and stay safe and, and have a good evening. Thank you, thank you. everyone. Thanks, bye.